This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map Arizona Sunshine for a 2v2 and in the south as the green nod. This is Eclipse. His teammate as the Cyan GDI. This is Shock Trepid. And in the north, hello again, we have Rylecom as the Red Reaper 17. And joining him, his teammates, good old Pennywise, accurately colored pink as the Black Hand. My personal favorite faction. Black Hand has a lot of people's favorites. I think I gotta go with Steel Talons almost entirely because of Titans. It's not necessarily what I play the most, but it's like... That's the one that I like the most. For the longest time, two flame tanks with purifying flame in the back line of an enemy. Before they even realized they were there, you took out maybe two, three tech things, bunch of power. It was it was very, very fun. And often you could take out base defenses before they were even set up. It's just how fast buildings go down. Yeah, purifying flame just like set to aggressive stance and walking through your opponent's base. It just you just delete everything. So thanks for having me Ooh. back again, Cyber. Glad to be back here watching some more games. I haven't seen Arizona Sunshine, you said, which is, I'm imagining it is quite hot. It, it looks blazing hot, but also in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, we have a fast airfield coming out from Shock Trepid, and that is blazing fast. One refinery, no war factory, right into the command post, and now quad orcas on the deck. The last one spawning in, and I have no idea what Shock Trepid is going to be able to get done, but this might be a very quick game if these find their mark. Not only that, but we have a ton of bikes coming out from Eclipse 2, making their way, both bikes and orcas, heading dead straight into our top team. I, I think some harvesters are going to have a few problems here. If they survive this first pass, they are going to have perhaps a decent shot at this game. But let's see where they go. First, Orcas actually missed their shot. The rockets go into the refinery and not into the uh, into the harvester. One Orca down. The other's going to be able to find their mark. And they hit a harvester on the deck. Take it down. Bikes coming in to finish the job. Uh, some buggies, shard walkers, yeah, lightning spike there to help deal with it. They've lost one, two, is that three harvesters total? Three harvesters in total going down. Not nearly as bad as that could have been. That could have been so much worse. And I mean, considering how much Shock Trepid cut to get that attack out, he doesn't have a second refinery in his main. He doesn't have a second refinery at his natural. He's just now getting his third harvester up and running. Shock Trepid is down on eco. I'm not sure if that was actually worth it. I don't know. He sunk too many of his orca shots directly into that refinery. I'm assuming that was either a misclick or an automatic. But they also lost a couple yeah. bikes here and there. They only lost one shard walker. But at the moment, the shot walkers are coming up. It looks like uh, Ralcom is moving his base up directly for his expansion. He's got a couple shard walkers walking around doing some patrols. Yeah, Eclipse and Shock Trepid have reformed. They are going out on another attack. But the only one who's left any harvest, who's lost any harvesters this game, is Pennywise. And I'm not sure if he's actually lost enough that this is really a problem. Uh, Orcas might get caught by these shard walkers. Barely escaping. Attack bikes are putting the hunt down on one of Pennywise's harvesters. They're Ooh. probably gonna get it. There it goes. Right before the buggies are able to do anything necessarily to it. Wow, so Pennywise is losing four harvesters now. He has just been building a ton of harvesters over the course of this game. But that has given Rildcom the opportunity to get his natural expansion set up without any aggression bringing being brought to his front door. rylcom has got uh, some couple secret of... tanks coming out too in the north. Mm, bikes that, and buggies. That harvester escaping to the blue Tiberium just barely in time. Rylcom, I don't know if he's actually spotted it there. He's trading out with the bikes and the buggies. Secret tanks all going down and the harvesters are kept safe. Rylcom is building up a decent bit of shard walkers and seekers now, trying to make sure he's got a good anti-harassment force down here in the center. Getting a little bit of fighting here, a bunch of buggies coming in from Pennywise. It's like just a little bit of trading over the uh, blue tib field here in the middle. 
Doesn't appear like anyone's touched neither the north or south blue tib, though, quite yet. I imagine that'd be a good spot for Pennywise to recoup some of his lost income. Yeah, Pennywise should definitely transition some harvesters over there as his main field dries up. He's got plenty of harvesters, just uh, not as many as he would have liked. MCV is on the move for Pennywise. He is potentially going for a third base. Rildcom reforming his front line in the north, and Pennywise looking for revenge in the south. Oh, Pennywise does have, has a sizable force, but he's going to be meeting up with Shock Trepid's... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Eclipse's nod right here for about similar force for force. Losing a few of them there. Though the, in the north, though, Rylcom is actually putting on some hurt. The attenuated force fields giving his forces some serious extra firepower or survivability as they hunt those harvesters. Eclipse saves the harvester. Perfect juking there in the command post to body block. Well played by this team. Both sides trading back and forth. The bike and buggy in the bottom right-hand corner of the map trading one-to-one -one pretty much from each team. This is like a, a big fight that has gone nowhere. It's just and with the same units too. Bike buggy in the south. Uh, up north, we have some descents coming in. Probably going to try to deal with a few of these tanks, but not doing much. Just kind of walking their way into the watchtowers. Yeah, they kind of got lucky to even do any damage at all. They didn't get any kills, but they got lucky that there were no shredder turrets there. Eclipse has lost the bike buggy fight in the south. Uh, I don't know that Pennywise actually has enough to do any real damage. Laser fence go or laser turret goes down. Bike buggy gets pushed back. Rildcom has been able to just go straight for tier three. He's got his natural expansion well set up. No one has claimed the blue Tiberium still. Uh, Eclipse trying to go for it, but. Wildcom has just been completely untouched for pretty much this entire game. He's just been able to do whatever he wants. Couple tripods are out now. Two Reaper 17 tripods are making their way over to the front lines here. And that, oh, avatars though also coming out for Eclipse. Some beam cannons, I'm assuming, will be, uh, be used to make those avatars shoot twice as fast. Oh man, the harassment coming in from both sides. Harvesters going down, one in the middle of the map, one on the edge. And a uh, Catalyst missile claiming a refinery in the south as well. Pennywise just cannot catch a break. His harvesters and his refineries being harassed all throughout this game. Though he's got quite the bike buggy force making its way over to Eclipse. And not only that, but some of these uh, descents and tribals are putting their hurt on the Scorpion tank force up in the north. There's a good line of Predator tanks out there too that is not doing much because the Marvel Reclamation facility, uh, words are hard today, I think is going to go down. Wow, and that is, is like the perfect timing. Pennywise showed up with that bike buggy force literally as the as the Reclamator hub was getting deployed and he just got a free kill on it. A real big mistake there from Shock Trepid. Spending that cash and then getting literally nothing for it. Not to mention, Raucom has been very nicely taking some of the blue tib in the center. Got some uh, hammerheads, the rocket troopers coming to try to deal with all of the tripods. No shard walkers there to help. Could really use those uh, bikes and raiders, which I do seem to be diverting their attention down center now. Ooh, a couple of phase tripods going for the crush. They The Predator tanks from Shock Trap have been able to avoid it so far, but this is like a perfect performance by Pennywise and Rildcom. They are definitely the underdogs in this match. Eclipse and Shock Trap making a couple of mistakes, going for some aggressive moves that haven't totally paid off, but this is a perfect performance by Pennywise and Rildcom. These guys are are probably playing like the best game of their lives. Not to mention, I'd say the eco has been a lot stronger on their uh, their side as well. They're harvesting all four main fields, but the left team, Eclipse and Shock Trap, have not uh, touched neither their green field or their top left blue field. It's almost, it almost feels like they figured they should have been able to win the game by now, so they didn't properly plan for the future. But Eclipse and Shock Trepid are getting dunked on in the south. Tripod's just going ham. Meanwhile, a backstab in the north, but one tripod is here to defend. Rildcom is going to get so much value from this tripod, eating up that bike and buggy army. Oof, that's swarm on the minimap down bottom a bunch of harassment units combined with tripods you've got 
a few juggernauts the marv is out the sonic emitter is there too that might be enough to stop them hammerheads are coming uh oh that's a whole lot of emp tripods and a whole lot of enemies coming in to deal with them lots of wounded tripods avatars making their way over i think they're i don't think they can keep this one up that stasis absolutely saving the day for Wildcom. His tripods should have been dead so much more quickly, and he still lost a lot of them, but he stood a chance to win that fight with that stasis coming in. And now the bike buggy comes in from Pennywise to try and save and clean up. They clear most of the husks, so that's a big reset on the army, but Wildcom definitely got the better of that situation. That stasis was just about game winning for him. Ooh, a Tib bomb uh, fired in the north right here, oh. taking out a harvester and just barely leaving the other one alive. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe after the entire Tib field basically exploded because of the Catalyst missile uh, with animation, that, that harvester is still just like, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm also enjoying the three buggies slowly right? whittling down the tech lab <laughs> in the back. They've been there for like two minutes and just the tech lab is just losing 1% health like every second and nothing is being done about it. He just doesn't seem like he much cares. Uh, we have some purifiers on the board right now. I think he needs to walk them forward because at the moment they are just, there's the fire. Oh, not quite. That's one issue I always have with purifiers. I forget now. to hit that aggressive. You gotta, you gotta walk them through. You gotta get both sides. Oh, tip vein detonation on top of the Reaper tripods, but it is not enough. The MCV goes down, the refinery goes down, and it's gonna be the hammerheads here to sweep things up. The Reaper tripods are damaged, but not dead. The purifiers largely pushed away and crushed. The Marv and the Juggernauts from Shock Trepid keeping Eclipse in this game. They are going to stop the bleeding as these tripods head for the hills. That is a sizable Juggernaut force as well. It was about seven moving their way up along associated with the Marv. That's not a small amount of tripods either, however. And I'm... Oh! Shredder turrets have taken out oh. the Raiders. God bless their souls. <laughs> Finally. The Shredder turrets doing the work there to save that tier three. Tripods pushing forward. It's going to be the Juggernauts who will fall first. The Marv trying to avoid the mass tripods from Rildcom. And Rildcom barely not having enough to swing through, but he has enough to clean up the Juggernauts. The Marv may survive, but it will be the only thing left alive. Well, a, a sizable level of the synths making their way up, probably to either clear up all of those husks or deal with the juggernauts that can't seem to deal with this level of the synths. Not a whole lot of anti-infantry coming. Those little bastards Ooh. are moving forward. More purifiers are on their way out, really trying to push the hurt on the Marv. I think it's going to live. Ooh. Oh, barely, barely right on the edge there. Wildcon thought he had it with the descent switch up, but it was not enough. This game coming so close to ending, but Shock Trepid and Eclipse just will not die like the buggy on the right side of the map, which somehow survived all of that defense of the one shredder turret. What is this buggy doing? He's decided, all right, I've got bigger fish to fry. I'm taken out of the power plant. It's easier. <laughs> what is it? He's just having him that there. That one buggy. I don't know what his deal is. He must be like, uh, like set to auto attack or something, and he's just getting distracted. Eclipse and Shock Trepid have reformed their front line. War Factory gets deployed. A bunch more Juggernauts on the front line. Some of them reclaimed as well as these tripods, and they have reformed their front line. R Rildcom within inches of victory and unable to close it out twice now. A lot of, a hell of a lot of buzzer towers here trying to deal with the uh, large amount of infantry being put in the front here. It's a couple, a couple uh, obelisks of light as well. The, av the purifier is not quite getting what they needed and now with a lack of anti-air besides a couple shard, oh, well, as I say that, Sam Tur comes up. We call that the uh, the caster's curse, but uh, you know, as normally as it's of uh, the player you predict to win the thing. But also, you know, it works in game as well. I say Whoop. thing will not happen. Thing happens immediately. Yeah, 
Eradicator Hexapod, uh, I think about halfway done for Rildcom. He has resisted the siren call of the epic unit, but no longer. The MCV gets completely nuked by those specters, and uh, Harvester getting targeted down in the south. Shock Trepid finding the damage with the hammerheads all throughout this game. Little obelisk of light popping off a couple of the harvesters going for the center field, probably automatically. Not a terrible concept there, making sure you can deal with anything that just decides to make its way over. Hexapod's out. Finally gets his epic unit. Now, this game has been controlled in at least the economy by Rildcom and Pennywise, but they are about to lose that advantage. They do have pretty decent main fields that have regrown back at their original main bases. If they're able to utilize those, they will be pretty well set up for the next phase of the game. Fortunately, Rildcom did have a, a gravity stabilizer, so he can rebuild the MCV if he hasn't already. And, uh, well, it looks like he is hoping his Eradicator Hexapod will win him the day because he's got almost nothing else on the ground other than the Eradicator Hexapod, only a couple of other units. And it seems that, at least from the map perspective, both Shock Trepid and Eclipse have the much larger eco advantage. Not only can they Marvis this entire field, but they have an entire field. And Harvesters are just dying one by one by one by this obelisk in the center. I think I've watched it kill four Harvesters just as they auto make their way to the center. Hammerheads are coming in. By power plant one. By power plant two. Oh. Oh. Shockwave artillery finds the Eradicator Hexapod. It was not long for this world, but the phase will save it when it was dead to rights. At the last second, the phase pops off. I'm not quite sure what forces our friends Pennywise and Rawcom have at the current moment. I've seen a couple Looking of tripods. In the south. Ooh. Yeah, you got those avatars in the south, the purifiers, which were camped out in Pennywise's base for quite some time. Stealth tank in the back line. Eclipse going to be able to find a couple of more harvester kills. You don't need a lot of harvesters this late in the game, but every kill can count. Ooh, those stealth tanks has replaced. It's an upgraded raider. He's the new guy in the back. <laughs> At least he can actually do some damage and kill stuff. These purifiers are coming in and down here in the bomb. They're supported by a couple of mantises, just in case those those zone head or uh, hammerheads get a little bit cheeky. But these obelisks of light are just gonna Ooh. stop them in their stop them in their tracks right there. Obelisk and then the claimed purifiers from Eclipse as well. EMP locks down the Mar for just a moment, but. There's too many supporting forces here. Shock Trepid and Eclipse, they have gotten that last wind from that big green Tiberium field in the north. But it's four versus three in the south. Now two versus two. A whole bunch of mantises here as well. Pennywise desperately hoping to beat out his opponent's purifiers that have been taken from him. Barracks gets deployed. Engineer should get sniped. Nicely done. Oh, the fight will be won by the obelisk. Couple little of these uh, mechapedes rolling in. I don't see these guys very often. I've always liked them. Now I know why I don't Mechapedes see them very are... often, as it dies immediately to the purifiers. Mechapedes are super fun to play with, and uh, yeah, they can be a big cash sink, though. Goodbye, Stealth Tank on the right. He claimed one last Harvester life before the obelisk obliterated him. I'm, uh, oh, another Mechapede going down. Redeemer, so sad. Redeemer making its way just all by his lonesome. Oh, wait, he is stealthed. I'm assuming that means it's a fake. Uh, no, I mean, it might be a real Redeemer. Oh. Well, Cloaking Fields just Redeemer here from, from Eclipse just... By himself, he's just walking his way in. Oh, maybe not. I'm not. I'm not quite sure what not he's doing. Sure, where he is? He's he's just he's just chilling, finding his way through the defenses. Shock trap it with a tier one or with a uh, single vet Marv, and now an ion cannon on the field. It's kind of formed into a bit of a stalemate. Rildcom and Pennywise having a lot of momentum in the first half of the game and then petering out and being unable to win the game from their early to mid game to position. And now they're kind of floundering in the late game.
I feel as if, uh, especially right here, Shock Trepid has a massive force he is moving up with right now. About eight Railgun Mammoth tanks, a uh, veteran Marv, and a decent load cool. of Juggernauts. About to go into the gauge the Eradicator and a whole lot of tripods. Oh, the RNG almost missing that Eradicator Hexapod, but it's going to be up to the tripods to come in as the stasis locks down the the uh, Juggernauts and the Tier 2 Double Vet Marv almost gets sniped. Hammerhead's oh. coming in as well. It's down the, to the Eradicator Hexapod, but there's way too much GDI firepower. No, he can't keep getting away with it. Oh, he did it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> They kill each other as Pennywise shows up with his purifiers. It might be too little, too late. Eclipse and Shock Trepid have the Sonics, have the Obelisks, and they have the game in the north. And considering the lack of units in the south, they may have the game in general. And there it is. GG. Rildcom and Pennywise putting up an amazing fight. These guys were outclassed by Eclipse and Shock Trepid, and yet they handled the opening aggression extremely well, and their mid-game transitions were on point as well. It was only in ending the game did they falter. The, A great match from them. Very good resources split across the board, too. Nice and clean. Rildcom is the only uh, outlier, but not even by much. Yeah, he was definitely leading the pack and taking some of his opponent's field. You could see the plan forming. He was like, I can take the, the northern green Tiberium field. And then he was unable to hold that position. And then that's when Eclipse and Shock Trap were able to actually take the game back. But a great 2v2 on Arizona Sunshine. Very fun one. I, it almost looked like we were about to have an upset. And it was very close back and forth. But at the end, I think despite the amount of money, it was the, the unit macro... And just getting some of those, and truly, the heroic raiders. How much money did he spend yes. <laughs> having to heal that tech lab? Uh, more than the cost of three raiders. <laughs> Thank you once the, the again. The tech lab, the power plants. Thank you once again for having me, Cyber. I really appreciate it. Definitely, Bricky. Always wonderful to have you on. And that'll do it for this game. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is Cyber signing out.